Old Time Tales presents a film strip flashback. Bambi by Felix Dalton. In the heart of the forest was a little glade that belonged to one of the roe deer. The glade lay only a few steps from the narrow trail where the deer went bounding through the woods. To find it, one had to be very familiar with the little passage leading to it through the thick bushes. One day, the doe, who inhabited the glade, lay down amidst the sprays of hazel, firs, and dogwood on the ground to rest a while for soon there would be a baby to share the glade with her. Nearby, the birds watched anxiously. Then, after many hours, Bambi was born in a thicket in the woods. What a beautiful child, chattered the magpie overhead. The mother deer thanked her as she continued to wash her newly born son with her tongue. His little red coat, still somewhat tousled, bore fine white spots, and on his baby face, there was still a deep, sleepy expression. His mother kissed him. Bambi, she said happily, my little Bambi. For the next few days, Bambi stayed very close to his mother. As he walked behind her on a narrow track through the bushes, he wondered why she kept stopping and sniffing the air. He asked her a hundred questions, for everything was new and wonderful to him. Early one morning, Bambi visited the meadow. There he talked to a grasshopper and looked at a butterfly. Although the meadow was a pleasant place to be, Bambi's mother warned him that sometimes there was great danger in the meadow. That's why deer went there only very early in the morning or late at night. Bambi didn't understand yet what danger meant, but he promised his mother that if she ever began to run, he would run away too, as fast as his legs could carry him. Run, repeated his mother, even if something should happen, even if you should see me fall to the ground. Once Bambi had promised, his mother grew more cheerful and began to introduce him to some of the interesting friends who lived in the forest and the meadow. One evening, Bambi's mother introduced him to a hare. All Bambi could see in the tall grass were two long ears moving. Then his mother said, Come here. This is our friend, the hare. Come here like a nice boy and let him see you. Bambi went over, and there sat the hare. What a charming young prince, said the hare. I congratulate you. Anyone can see he'll make a splendid prince in time. Anyone can see that. Suddenly, he sat straight up on his hind legs. Bambi jumped. He had never seen anyone do that before. With a sniff at the wind, the hare said goodbye and hopped away quickly. Bambi's mother looked after him thoughtfully. The good hare, she said. He doesn't have an easy time of it in this world. Then, while his mother was eating the sweet grass, Bambi saw something moving on the other side of the meadow. It was his mother's sister, Ina. Later, he was happy to meet Ina and her two little fawns, Gobo and Feline. While the two mothers talked, the three little fawns enjoyed a game of tag through the meadow. Just then, two stags with spreading antlers came crashing out of the forest. They tore by like the wind, then stopped abruptly about 20 feet away. Bambi stared at them. In some way, they resembled his mother and Aunt Ina, except their heads were crowned with gleaming antlers. One was stately and beautiful, while the other was smaller and his antlers narrower. The stately one carried his head up, and his antlers rose high above it. Oh, said Feline in admiration, but Bambi said nothing. The two stags passed close to the children, walking in silent splendor. The children did not dare breathe till they had disappeared into the thicket. Who were they, cried Feline. Bambi's mother told him that the larger stag was his father. Didn't they see us, asked Bambi. Of course they saw all of us, his mother replied. Then why didn't they stay with us or speak to us? They only stay with us at times, answered his mother a bit sadly. We have to wait till they come to us. Bambi's heart was troubled. 
Will my father ever speak to me? He asked. Of course he will, his mother promised. When you're grown up, he'll speak to you and you'll stay with him sometimes. How handsome he is, said Bambi. And then his mother said, If you live, my son, if you are cunning and don't run into danger, you'll be as strong and handsome as your father. And you'll have antlers like his, too. As Bambi grew older, he learned the sounds and smells of the forest. He knew how to sniff the air now, too, and how to tell from far off who was in the forest around him. One day, as he stood at the edge of a clearing, he saw a creature he had never seen before. It stood remarkably erect, was extremely thin, and had a pale face that was entirely bare around the nose and the eyes. A kind of dread seemed to come from that face, a cold terror. For a long time, the creature stood without moving. As Bambi watched, this creature raised what looked like a stick to his face. Bambi had not even noticed those two horrible legs that grew up near the creature's shoulders. Then the strange creature pointed the long stick at him. Terrified, Bambi ran into the forest to his mother. She told him that he had just seen a man. When Bambi began asking her questions about the man, she would not answer. But her whole manner told the fawn that man was something to be feared. Soon, however, another incident frightened Bambi so much that he almost forgot about the man. One morning, when he woke up, his mother was gone. He ran through the forest, trying to find her. Soon he came upon Gobo and Feline. Their mother was gone, too. Several days passed before the mothers returned. After that, the fawns were often left alone. On another day, Bambi was crying for his mother. He had wandered about, sad and lonely, and had not even been able to find his friends. His life was changing, though he did not know it, and he was frightened. In the midst of his calling, Mother, Mother, a great stag appeared and told Bambi he should be ashamed to cry. What are you crying about? He asked severely. Your mother has no time for you now. Can't you stay by yourself? Bambi wanted to say something, but he couldn't utter a word. The stag turned and was gone as quickly and quietly as he had come. Later, Bambi learned he had met the old prince, the biggest and wisest stag in the forest. Feline, who had returned to the glade, told him about the old prince. Nobody knows how old he is, she said. Nobody knows where he lives. At times he was thought to be dead because he hadn't been seen for so long. He speaks to nobody, and no one dares speak to him. He uses trails none of the others use. He knows the very depths of the forest and he does not know such a thing as danger. Other princes fight one another at times, but for many years, no one has fought with the old stag, and of those who fought with him long ago, not one is living. He is the great prince. After that, each day brought with it a new experience, some pleasant and some terrible, as when, one morning, Bambi and his mother were nibbling grass. A stag came out of the forest. Since Bambi had never seen any of the fathers so close before, he decided to speak to him. Suddenly, there was a loud sound. The stag leaped into the air and fell dead. Bambi looked around, dazed. The thunderous sound still echoed in the air. He saw the hare, the squirrels, and the pheasants running toward the trees. Bambi did not move but stood staring at the pool of blood spreading on the grass beneath the stricken stag. Don't stop, cried his mother, rushing past him at full gallop. Run, run as fast as you can. Terrified, Bambi and his mother raced into the forest. What is it, mother? He asked as they ran on. It was he, she answered, man. Later, safe in the woods, Many of the birds and animals were talking about the tragedy. Bambi could not understand such wanton cruelty. So when he met the old prince again, 
He asked him about the stag's death. The prince smiled at him. Then he said slowly, Listen, smell, and see for yourself. Find out for yourself. Farewell. And he vanished. A few weeks later, winter came and snow fell. Grass was hard to find. Bambi noticed that the world was changed. It was hard for him to get used to having to scratch and scrape the ice away to find a few dried blades of grass to eat. But now, every once in a while, the stags would join them. In the beginning, the children were a little shy, but soon they all got on well together. They talked often about man. One of the young deer said, They say that sometime he'll come to live with us and be as gentle as we are. He'll play with us, and the whole forest will be happy, and we'll be friends with him. An old deer named Netla replied angrily, Friends with him. He's murdered us ever since we can remember, every one of us, sisters, mothers, brothers. Ever since we came into the world, he's given us no peace. With that, a terrible thundering sound rang out. Man was back. Afterwards, it seemed that wherever Bambi went, he found his friends broken and bleeding, and there was weeping from one end of the woods to the other. A group of hunters in the forest killed many of the animals that winter. And one day, poor Gobo was wounded. But when the deer came to look for his body, he was gone, and man's tracks were all about in the snow. Bambi asked his aunt, who was crying for her son, Aunt Ina, have you seen my mother? No, answered Ina gently. And Bambi never saw his mother again. That spring, Bambi grew his first pair of antlers. He spent much time beating them against the wood of a hazel bush, scraping the skin and hide off the shining white bone underneath. By now, he was full-grown and very handsome. As his mother was gone, Bambi spent most of his time alone. He missed poor Gobo very much, too, and wondered why he had not seen Feline or Ina for a long time. As the summer days grew warmer, a great restlessness came over him. He felt lonely and sought out some of the bucks for company, but they chased him away, even those who had been his friends during the summer before. A year later, Bambi met Feline again. In that time, she had grown into a beautiful deer. At first, they were both quite shy with each other, but after a while, they spoke about their childhood days and the long, dreadful winter that had lost Feline a brother and Bambi his mother. Once more, they played as they had done when they were very young. And after a short while, Bambi realized why he had been so lonely and so restless. He told Feline that he loved her and that he wished to be her mate. Because Feline loved him too, she promised to stay with him. Together, they darted across the meadow leaping high in the air for joy. Suddenly, an older stag named Karis appeared and tried to block Bambi's way. Get out, commanded Karis angrily. I forbid you to follow Feline. Bambi became enraged. With his antlers lowered, he charged Karis and knocked him to the ground. Without waiting, he wheeled and charged again. For the third time, Bambi attacked Karis and he fled. A few yards further on, another buck named Rano challenged Bambi. By now, Bambi was thoroughly aroused, and he nearly killed Rano, who, bleeding and shaking, slunk off in silence. When he was gone, Feline appeared at the edge of the woods. That was wonderful, she said. I love you. They walked off happily together. A few weeks later... Feline and Bambi went into the meadow and saw Gobo nibbling grass. They could hardly believe their eyes, for everyone thought he was dead. They ran to tell Ina, who wept for joy that her son was still alive. But Gobo had changed a great deal, and the things he said troubled the other deer very much. Gobo told them that he had been caught by hunters who had kept him until he was full grown. They had healed his wound and let him live in their house. He thought that man was good and kind 
and more powerful than any other creature. The old prince heard this talk and looked at Gobo pityingly. You poor thing, said the prince, walking away. But Gobo paid no attention to him. Just then a hunter appeared in the woods. Gobo went out to talk to him. The other deer beseeched him not to go near the man, but Gobo thought all men were the same as those who had befriended him. He had forgotten all his early training. As the deer watched in horror, there was a loud report. Gobo leaped into the air and fell dead. After this, Bambi's heart grew heavy. He did not know what was happening to him, but he wished only to be alone. He saw Feline once in a while, but as is the custom of the deer, once they mate, they do not speak much. As his father before him, it was Bambi's time to be alone. Sometime later, Bambi met the old prince again. They had often spoken together as Bambi had grown older, and a great fondness had sprung up between them. As they were talking, the old stag heard a noise. Without hesitating, he leaped into the woods with Bambi following close behind. They heard something beating the earth over and over again. Bambi was frightened. Isn't it dangerous, he called. It's terribly dangerous, answered the old prince. A moment later, they found a forest friend lying on the ground, writhing in agony. With his antlers, the old prince freed a hare caught in a noose. When he was loose, the hare began to cry, but the stag silenced him sharply. Bambi touched the terrible noose. Is it he? he asked the prince. Yes, but he isn't in the forest now. Yet he is here, said Bambi, looking at the noose. The old prince said bitterly, Didn't Gobo tell you he is all-powerful and all-good? He was good to Gobo, whispered Bambi. Do you believe that, Bambi? asked the prince. Bambi couldn't answer then, but... One misty morning, a hunter wounded Bambi as he stood at the edge of the clearing. As the hunter and his yelping dogs chased him, Bambi raced madly into the forest and lay down to rest. He was exhausted and thought he was dying. He heard the dogs coming nearer, drawn by the scent of his blood. He cowered in a thicket, waiting for death. There the old prince met him and showed him some herbs which would stop the bleeding. Bambi forced himself to chew the bitter leaves. Then he licked his wound to stop the bleeding. Together, the two deer ran through the trees, the old stag forcing Bambi to go on, even though Bambi thought he could not move another foot. Not until they had eluded the hunter and the dogs did the old prince allow Bambi to lie down again. The old prince stayed with Bambi until his wounds healed. It was many long weeks before he was able to run about, but when he was fully recovered, Bambi found Feline again. Everyone in the forest was surprised because they had thought Bambi dead. And Feline, who missed him terribly, had often been sad thinking of him. Now they were together again. He stood and looked at her and their two fawns. He was very proud of them all. He knew that when the time came for such things, he would come for Feline once more. Then he went back to the forest to stay with the old prince, who was growing very old and whose fur had turned completely silver. Bambi was growing older, too. And when... One day Bambi saw a brother and sister fawn crying in the forest for their mother. It seemed a long time ago that he had called Mother, Mother. As the old prince had once done for him, he told the fawns to learn to stay by themselves. Your mother has no time for you now, he said severely. He looked into the little brother's eyes. Can't you stay by yourself? And he left them, knowing that when they were full grown, he would see them again and teach them as the old prince had taught him. Then, as the old prince had vanished years ago, Bambi disappeared in the forest, where he found his friend dying. Calmly, the old stag told Bambi, 
that man was not all-powerful, that there was something else more powerful above man and above the animals. Don't come with me any further, Bambi, he continued. My time is up. Now I have to look for a resting place. Bambi tried to speak. Don't, said the prince. In the hour which I am approaching, we are all alone. Goodbye, my son. I loved you dearly. Bambi never saw him again. From then on, it was Bambi who kept to himself and walked the hidden forest trails silent as a shadow. He became as much a legend as the old prince had been, for he had become the biggest and the wisest prince in the forest. for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Have a great day.